This is someone who has written something like this. Now, our first thing, the first thing that we need to do in the exam is we have to read this paragraph. After that, we have to figure out what kind of paragraph or what kind of text is it. And after reading this, I feel like this is an opinion-based text. Once I know this is an opinion-based text, I should try to recall the structure for the opinion-based text. And the structure says opinions. In opinions, there will always be speaker's opinion, like opinion one and why or how, opinion two and why and how. And sometimes there are other people's opinion as well, and they will tell you why they think in that way. So that means no matter you are reading something or listening to someone, whenever it is about opinion, there will be someone writing or talking about something, and they will always give you the, the rationale behind their ideas, why they are thinking in that way. The rationale can be in the form of reasons like why and in the form of descriptions like how. Sometimes they give you example as well to validate their point. Now, in this particular example, we can see that the person who is writing this essay is telling us that obituaries are difficult to write. Then they are telling us why and they are giving us example as well. Usually examples are not needed to be included in your summaries. So what I mean by that is if you look here, the first paragraph says, whether written to appear in a national publication or in anthology dedicated to the lives of a group of adventurers, political figures, or other noteworthy people, obituaries are often the trickiest type of text to produce. This is the main idea. Usually the main idea of a paragraph will be in the first sentence because if you recall our essay writing class, I told you that topic sentence is always the first sentence of the paragraph. Not all the writers follow that rule, so we cannot expect all the time to see the topic sentence as the first sentence of the paragraph. But most often we'll see this, as you can see here, right? Our job is to find out the most important ideas and then find out the support. Someone is telling us arbitraries are often the trickiest type of text to produce. Now, they must also tell us why. They must describe to us why they are trickiest. And that's what this guy is doing after this sentence is explaining to us how the obituaries can be trickiest. Because if you read on, that's the description of how obituaries can be trickiest. An obituarist must consider all the events of a person's life, the feelings of their friends and acquaintances will live and after they have died, and the impression the obituary will make upon its readers who have not personally known the deceased. These are the things they have to consider, right? A poorly written obituary can cause great offense to people at a time of great sadness. This is another point he's making. And it can cause great embarrassment to the editors of the publication in which it is found. When Canadian scientist uh, Wyvern Brill passed away at the age of 88, many people were angered by her obituary in the New York Times because the first line commented upon her cooking and mothering skills rather than her development of rocket and jet propulsion technologies. So what's the theme here? Obituaries are difficult to write. That's the main point. Why or how? <clears throat> why and how? My question is why or how? Do you see the two reasons or the two explanations the writer is proposing there? Because you are supposed to include all the important events that F, that will satisfy that will satisfy the um, acquaintances and friends as well as the people who did not know the deceased. Yeah, right? Yeah. Otherwise, what happens? They feel embarrassed. And then the question is that why is that hard? I think the obituary person in order to deceased. He doesn't know the person. So what they're saying is, when you're writing the obituary, you have to make sure that people who do not know the person also are aware of the deceased. Are also aware of the deceased. What he did or she did. And that means you need to write about a lot of things. You do not have that much space to write an arbitrary. You need to write a lot of things. If you do not write properly, people will feel offended. And then your, your magazine, your newspaper, 
will have to bear the humiliation from the others because many people will criticize you for not doing your jobs properly. Right? That's what they are trying to say. That when you're writing obituary, you need to make sure that you have written all the important things, right? But you do not have that much space to write. And if you do not do it properly, everybody will blame you for your lack of efficiency or for not doing your job properly. These are the main points there. The first paragraph is telling us the expectation of the readers of obituary. They expect two things. First, they think that obituary covers all the important aspects of the person's life so that even the unknown people can know about the contribution of the deceased. And if it is not done properly, then the publications have to bear the uh, criticism, have to face the criticism of the angry readers. But selecting the most important things and including them in the arbitrary is not easy. That's what they are saying in the second paragraph because they are saying selecting what to include and what not to include in an arbitrary is of course not an easy task. Why? Because the person have, the persons whose arbitraries are written have both personal life as well as professional life. Now they have, may have some characteristics in the personal life and some characteristics in the professional life. Now both of them perhaps are equally important for them, but you cannot include all of them. And um, no matter how hard you try, there will be something that will be missing and people will blame you for that. So it's a challenging task because in the smallest place you have to write a lot, right? But that's what C is trying to say, uh, that this person, this writer is trying to say. Now, you need to write a good summary, including these points. First point, obituaries are difficult to write. This is opinion, right? And for every opinion, there should be a support. Why obituaries are difficult to write? What are the reasons given here? It should contain enough details for both acquaintances, acquaintances and Acquaintances means people who know the deceased and okay. strangers for reaching or incomplete. Obituary. can be offensive to the readers and may cause embarrassment to the editors or publication. Selecting the professional and personal achievements of people is not an easy task. Are these the three important points so far? Now we have to put the three points into one sentence. Now you need to think about the relationship between these sentences. Then only you can arrange and organize them in the proper way. So you have to write in a way that makes sense to people who read it and is less confusing to them. In doing so, you may have to reduce the number of words. You may have to do some editing with your ideas and then only you'll be able to present it. So let's see how we can do that. Let's think the different ways we can do this. What we are saying is, 
Arbitraries, poorly written arbitraries can cause great embarrassment to the editors. Um, but to write a good arbitrary, it is quite difficult to decide what to include and what not to include, as a person may have many professional and personal achievements. That's what they're saying, right? Finish? That's one way. That sounds simple, right? After this. Another way. Opinion plus the support. Now let's go to the format we have discussed here. So that's the, uh, that's how we, how we're writing, are we? Like speaking yeah. opinion plus why and how? Yeah. Why and how? Three times. Yeah, it depends. It, uh, what I'm saying is, as many opinions are there, you should have that many supports as well. If there is only one opinion, then there will be maybe maybe two, three, four supports. But if there are two opinions, you have to write both opinions and supports for both of them. So if there are three opinions, then you have to write all the opinions and all the supports. That's what I'm saying. So well now we understood that this paragraph is an opinion based. <coughs> yes. So my sentence, whatever I'm going to come up with, has to be fit in that one category. Yes, I, I, I should try to write in that way because um, then it becomes easier for me to produce my work. So you can see, we have got some samples here, sample answers. I can use the example, um, the language used in these sample answers. I can say that um, writing arbitrary is a challenging task because of the reason that readers of the arbitraries often want to see all the professional and personal achievements of the deceased person but selecting what to include and not to include can be quite tough for the editors and if not done properly it can cause them great damage that's, it. that's another way by following the format yep. right so if you make a habit of following the format what happens is what happens is you start thinking in that way all the time you know one thing when you go to salesperson if you ask them questions about the products in the store they can easily explain to you, like this product is this, this, that, that. They will speak so fast and they tell you everything is smoothly. Ask them something they do not know and they are like, oh, I do not know any class manager. Or they will disappear from there, right? Why do you think this happens? Because whenever they are discussing about the product, they have already rehearsed that. They already know how to do it. You ask something new, then they have to think again. And that needs time. And that's why they disappear from there. It's the same thing here. If you start trying different different styles for different different questions, then you will not develop that skill to um, you know present your information in a concise manner in the given time. But if you tend to follow like this is the opinion question, I will change this answer to my format. And all the time, if you do that, after some time, you will feel it quite convenient, quite comfortable, right? In that manner. Now, I already know what is the opinion I want to present. My opinion is arbitraries are difficult to write. Why arbitraries are difficult to write? Poorly written arbitraries can cause great embarrassment um, to the editors of the publications, but um, but writing arbitraries that is um, that is satisfactory to both uh, the acquaintances and strangers, and including all the personal and professional details, are, are selecting um, from the personal and professional achievements of the person is not an easy task because of these reasons, right? Now let's try. Let's try to do that. Obituaries are difficult to write because a good obituary should be able to present the most important information and events of the deceased in a way that both strangers and acquaintances um, find, now I forgot the spelling of this, acquaintances, let me finish this, acquaintances, both the strangers and acquaintances can So satisfied. However, now I know however cannot be written here. If I want to write however, always remember this: colon. 
however, comma. Otherwise, write just comma and but. We want to write however, colon, however, comma. Okay. Obituaries are difficult to write because a good obituary should be able to present the most important information and events of the deceased in a way that both the strangers and acquaintances feel satisfied. However, selecting the most important, selecting the, and now let's not say, selecting the information and writing them in a manner non-offensive to everyone is a uh, Challenging task. Did we summarize everything now? Obituaries are difficult to write because a good obituary should be able to present the most important information and events of the deceased in a way that both strangers and acquaintances feel satisfied. However, selecting the information and writing them in a manner non offensive to everyone is a challenging task. Did they say the same thing? Yeah. Yes. Maybe the order is not same because the second part of what we have written in the summary was actually in the first paragraph and then uh, some of the parts of the first sentence was actually in the second paragraph and then the first part of the sentence was in the first paragraph. So we changed the order because we had to organize in information in a way it could be presentable and because of that we had to do that. So the point here is the first important thing you need to keep in mind is to identify the text. What kind of text are you dealing with? Is it an opinion-based text, research-based text, problem-based text, or whatever it is? If it's an opinion-based text, we know one thing. Opinion-based text should always come with some opinions and some support for them. Sometimes there will be only one opinion, sometimes there will be more than one opinion. Your job is to find all the opinions and all the supports. In some of the cases, the text deal with two um, um, I mean, the text deal with two sides, like many people believe in this way and they think this, but in my opinion, this is the truth. Now, this is the kind of text where you may have to follow this kind of format. Some people assert that because of this, whereas the author argues that in something. If you find two contradictory opinions in the text, if you find two conflicting arguments in the text, follow this. If you find only one kind of opinion, follow this. If there is only one person saying two different things, three different things, four different things, follow this one. If there are two group of people who are fighting about something, who are discussing about something, follow the second one. Right? Since here, there is only one person who is talking arbitraries and why it is important to write good arbitraries, so we can just follow the first side. A person is thinking like this because of this reason. Because this happens and because now for this one also if I don't want to write in this way and just want to follow this I can just simply write in this format and that so what I can do here is because of the reason that I can write this and then here I can do the same thing and that Now, if you compare this with the previous example, you'll see the same thing there as well. Opinion, because of the reason that first reason and that second reason. See, because of the reason that first reason and that second reason. If we can write this much, what I have done here, you'll easily score 90. Another What will it 90? Because it's about presentation of your information and inclusion of the important ideas and not making any grammatical mistakes and not confusing the readers. Not writing something which was not in the passes that you read. Did we write anything that was not in the passes? Are we making up anything here? No. This is what the passes said. Did we include all the important information? Do you feel like any information is missing now? 
yes, of course, we are not talking about that person why been real. We are not talking about what her, her mother did or what she used to do. But that point is not important here because Wyvern Bill uh, is being mentioned here as an example. Like this thing happened in case of her, and many people were angry because the editor of the newspaper did not include the professional achievements of the deceased um, at the top, but rather started with the personal achievements. And some of the people were quite angry about that because they thought that her professional achievements were more important than the personal. But at the same time, sometimes you need to write both professional and personal achievements um, so that you can tell. Um, uh, comprehensively about the person because a person exists outside his professional world as well right your personality your overall personality is not just what you do in your work but also what you do at your home right and that's the point they are trying to make and but the, the problem is the if you try to focus on the personal part then people might feel like you are ignoring the professional part and if you try to focus on the professional part the people might just say that you are too dry you're just talking about his profession you're not talking about what kind of person he is Right. Can I ask this first as usual, and then in a few days about acquaintances and strangers, the to be placed with this one uh, should be combined professional status of disease persons in society. I didn't understand your question. No, this sentence it should contain enough detail. The first sentence. Which one? Obviously, are uh, difficult to write. Uh -huh. We put in the points. Uh -huh. It should be contained enough details for both acquaintances and strangers. Be able to be placed with this sentence. The very uh, difficult to write because uh, persons' professional status should be hard in the obituary report. Very hard to find out the pro this is a person' professional status in the so society. Do you get that? I oh, not get your okay. uh, I've just read that uh, when I able to write, uh, it's very hard to find out the disease person's professional status in the society. Okay, Can and from, this? Fr from where you are getting that information? Uh, um, where did they say that it's very hard to get the information about the professional status? Well, 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 Third line, last. Here? No, from the first paragraph. I think he's looking yeah, at that. Yeah, obituary must be considered even the personal life, feelings, their friends, and acquaintance who live on after their life. Yeah, that, but that doesn't mean that it's difficult to find the information about their professional life. What they are saying is, when you're writing the obituary, two kind of people will read it. First, those people who personally knew the person, Second, those who did not know the person personally, but want to know about him. Right. So there is some, you know, the engineer, the token about Canadian scientist. That's an example of something mis so unfortunate that happened in that person's case. Okay, oh, so we can't write that something like that. It's not important because okay. that's just an example. Is this paragraph, is this passage about Wyvern Bridge? No. Now, think like this, okay. information, whether you should include it or not. If you are really confused about that, one good trick to find out the important and non-important information is think, what this paragraph is about. Is this paragraph about Wyvern Bree? The paragraph is about arbitraries. Why do you think Wyvern Bree has been mentioned here? To give an example of what can happen if you do not write a good arbitrary. So that means, he has already made the points. In, our, in order to convince you about his point, he's giving the example of Wyvern Bill because he's telling you that I'm not just making things up. This thing has actually happened. There was a lady called Wyvern Bill who passed away at the age of 88 years. And then an arbitrary was published. But the arbitrary started, started with a, professional, a personal achievements rather than the professional, and people became angry. So that means if you do not write a good arbitrary, it can not only anger people, it can also affect your own personal um, goodwill, your prestige. So you need to be careful about writing arbitrary. But the problem is, even though we say we have to be careful, it's a challenging task because in a smaller space, you have to write something so that you can, um, you can make the deceased person uh, known to all people, including their friends, family, and the strangers who never knew the person. And at the same time, you have to include all the important information about a person's life, both professional and personal. 
Now, if there is even a little imbalance, then people will be angry. And achieving that balance is a very difficult thing. So you can present the same information in multiple ways. So you might say that writing a well-balanced obituary can be a challenging task, and if not done properly, can lead to many problems. That is also a summary. Just a final summarized one, yeah. yeah. Now see, I just give you another summary. That is summary of even this summary. You put in summary of summary of the summary, summary. is that <laughs> summary of the summary is that writing a well balanced obituary can be a challenging task for the editors of any publication as what as Selecting and discarding information and maintaining the professional reputation is quite hard when you are dealing with this type of text. So the first one, what we have come up with is just the uh, it's points. Yes. And that's what we should be getting. Out yeah. Of. And yeah. then uh, looking at those three points, mm. we're going to finally write this statement. Whatever you understood after that, if you present it, and if you are not sure how to present it, you can take the help of the template that we have created for our practice. Which one, though? The one, the one at the top. You can read them. When you go back home, you can read your notes, and you perhaps will get an idea about how you can present your information yeah. in that manner. I'll say, you know, if, you, if you can scroll all the way down, um, it says, why have opinion two, and then why. Okay, I'll about. make it easy for you. It's like this. So it's opinion one plus why have opinion two. No, no, no. Makes sense, yeah? Yeah, opinion one, opinion two. That's speakers. Yeah. And, and if there is, um, there is um, any mention of the other people who are talking about the same topic, then you can include their opinions as well. But in doing so, you have to follow this kind of format. You have to say that some people are believe, um, arguing this thing, and the author of this paper is arguing something else. You have to write in that manner. How many types of questions you can expect? So two type opinion and argument? Five different types of questions. This is only opinion. This is only opinion. Then there is research description. Then there is product description. Then there is problem description, then there is timeline description. You should practice all types of questions and be familiar with all types of questions. Why the is different? Yeah. The for example, like if you want to go on adding the opinions, mm -hmm. like you can uh, write semicolons and go on. Yeah, you can do that. Or you can just write a comma and say, and that, and that, and that. Is there any problem? Or you, you don't want to write and, even that is possible. Repetition, there's something. Sorry? Repetition. Repetition. No, that is a linking word, and linking words can be repeated. So, for example, you can write just this much that despite its certain economic benefits, it can cause long term damage both socially and culturally. That some services are social provisions and not businesses. That you can add third one as well. This is a trick. If you feel like you can't add anything, this is a trick that can help you to write a good summary. Now, and another thing is, as I was talking about, the more important thing here is the theme rather than the actual words and expressions. Now, what is the theme of um, this paragraph? The theme is arbitraries can be challenging to write because you need to select the important information and make everyone satisfied. So like, That's also summary, yes. right? Isn't it? I'm still saying the same thing. Arbitraries can be difficult to write because you need to select the appropriate information and make everyone satisfied. And then I'll come into the paragraph. Let's say <laughs> you've got limited time. And mm -hmm. That was good to know the top of the sentence was sitting on the second line itself. Mm -hmm. And if we start breaking down this whole paragraph, mm -hmm. starting with top of sentences and then opinion and then supporting, mm -hmm. and I think you will start again the same second paragraph that it will begin with topic or something opinion. I'm trying to write a simple summary of what I have written. So the one that I wrote was based on a format, right? 
And I'm using the format because for some of you in the exam, nothing else will work and you have to resort to the format to write. Because you will not be able to think properly and you will not be think, able to think freely in the exam. We all know that. Everything changes in the exam. No matter how many times we practice in the class, in the exam, what matters is your state of mind. If you feel like if you feel like it's too difficult, then everything will become difficult. Your brain will stop functioning, and you will just start doing some strange and weird things. But is there a way to write a good summary of these types of text? Yes, just based on your understanding. Now there is a theme you have achieved here that obituaries can be difficult because you need to write uh, the information that can satisfy all types of readers. Right? That's actually a summary of this paragraph. Isn't it? It's yeah. Isn't it? There's any problem. Is there no. Like small words or something. No, it doesn't matter. If you have included all the important it's information, it should not be less than five, but as long as it's more than five and you have included all the important information, you'll still score nicely. So I'll write a very simple summary here. Arbitraries can be difficult to write A's. They need to be comprehensive. It satisfactory to all types of readers. This is a summary. Yes, yes. It's still, it's still, it's still, it's, it, this sentence is also saying the same thing. Comprehensive means covers everything, but satisfactory means everyone should be happy. Yeah. yeah, if you check the sample answers given by Pearson, most of the summaries are this are, are of this type. One line. One line summaries. But see, th there is a saying in English, like writing simple is more difficult. Sure. This one sounds so easy, right? But this sound sounds so easy, but remember, we have already spent more than half an hour talking about this. To come to this stage, we have already spent more than half an hour. In your exam, you just have 10 minutes. So what I'm saying is, yes, it feels like, now this one is quite easy, but to come to this stage of understanding, we had to spend so much time thinking about what to write. Right? Then only we knew that we can write this also, because this is all the theme of whatever we have been writing. So that's why when we read someone's novel, someone's article, we say that it's such a good article. It sounds so easy, but it's such a good written article. And you feel like, no, this type of easy writing will not get this score. I have to write something complex. Now, writing complex is actually easy. Making it simple is difficult. And I'm not just talking about making it simple. I'm talking about making it simple and retaining the theme and meaning. We're not just simplifying it. We are retaining the meaning. Now, can we, if, can we break down this one? sentence line mm -hmm. like let's say you know how every sentence starts with let's say you're just sort of putting something else you start with other shares and it should have something if you put in a grammatical sentence mm -hmm. can you break down for us like what is that first arbitrary what do you consider in the subject this one? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. The second, the, the, the more simple summary, what you have come up with. This, one this line. subject yeah. can be difficult to write. This is from here to here. In every English sentence, the first part, the worker, the agent, is called the subject. And rest of the part, which gives you extra information about the subject, is called predicate. 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 P-R-E-D-I-C-A-T. Predicate. Predicate tells about the subject. What did the subject do? What is the information about the subject? So we, in English sentences, we always have subject and predicate. Now, in the uh, English grammar class, we might have learned about subject, verb, and object, right? Verb and object usually are called predicate because they give extra information about the subject. Yeah. So for example, if I say chairing, what? Came to the class, that's the predicate. Chairing, what? Came to the class. Chairing is subject came to the class is a predicate. Now, if you look into the predicate, predicate can be made up of many other grammatical forms. Like it can have adjectives, it can have adverbs, it can have verbs, it can have um, the pronouns, and so many other things. Yes. So now, as you said, that's a simple way to close the sentence if nothing is striking to your mind. So I'm happy to say, okay, subject is the first thing I'm going to put it down. I'm going to put something 
straight away at readers or something extra at the point, you know what I mean? If I start with subject of it, I'll make sure we're talking about subject, support it, I'm put down can be difficult to write or from understanding. See, it's still I'm following the format. That's right. Obituaries can be difficult to write. Opinion? What is the reason? As they need to be comprehensive and satisfactory to all types of readers. That's the reason. Didn't we say the same thing here? Opinion? And give the reason. Opinion? Tell us why or how. Uh, what I did was, I just did a clever thing here. I combined the two reasons together and made one reason out of them. Comprehensive and satisfactory. Well, from the most, because it sounds very easy for us, without using a formula, trying to put it, it will be like jungle. Hmm. Everything will be like jumbled, you know. <laughs> now let's try the second one. Let's try to do the same thing. We are putting examples. I don't know why I'm putting examples. Yeah, that's that's the tendency of the students to do like they.